Millions of tourists from America and around the world flock to the U.S. Capitol each year to see government institutions, monuments, and the dozens of museums that line the National Mall. The Smithsonian Institute is the world's largest museum and research complex. Funded by the U.S. government and private endorsements, it boasts 19 museums, nine research centers, and a zoo. They showcase endangered species, artwork, historical artifacts, and even the first fragile remnants of human life. Perhaps the most popular is the National Air and Space Museum, which draws over 8 million visitors each year. It's a huge collection. Um, not only are the artifacts very, very large, uh, but they are, we have a lot of them, and they commemorate the history of aviation and spaceflight, which is so important to American history in general. It's challenging in that we serve a lot of people. It's the most visited museum in the world. The Smithsonian institutions are free to enter and have weathered the economic downturn well. But even the trendy International Spy Museum, which is located in downtown Washington and which charges nearly $20 for a standard adult entry, says it's thriving. The thing about our admission fee is that people see stuff here they can't see anywhere else. Uh, so actually, we don't, we don't hear a lot of griping about that. We, we, do, we do well despite that. In an era of video games and online entertainment, some museums are struggling to stay relevant. Interactive displays and educational programs help attract young visitors, and curators try to update exhibits often with fresh content. We're really always out there looking for new, interesting uh, content, um, and it's just a question of keeping on our toes. Um, I think, you know, it's, if you think about what are the obvious issues in intelligence and uh, espionage-related things, uh, these days obviously it's terrorism and it's cyber. But it's just, a, you know, it's a question of uh, just uh, reading the headlines and, and, and working our connections of who we know to, to, to provide new content. I think there's a lot of interest in space right now. Uh, young people are, are very interested in space exploration, so that's good. And then our research division, Planetary Studies, is also, I think, very interesting to young people and adults as well. So we're very relevant, I think, um, for future generations. That appeal to the next generation is crucial for museums across America and around the world. Museums here in the U.S. Capitol seem optimistic about their future, even as technology advances. Many now showcase their collections online, so viewers around the world can view the priceless works of art and historical treasures from the comfort of their own homes. And as they continue to draw in children and their families, Washington's museums hope to remain relevant on this International Museum Day and beyond. Kate Moody, CCTV, Washington.